Skyler, congratulations for Zoe's extraordinary Christmas. Thank you so much. This is a, this is a film that uh, I guess everyone expected that it it should it should have happened. Um, we would figure it would be a Christmas episode, but a movie just as just as good, right? I'll take it. I mean, we're so happy, and we got double the time to tell the story than we would have a regular episode. So nobody's complaining. Now, was was this uh, always in the works? Was this always planned, or was this something that happened, uh, you know, after, you know, season two? I think that we, um, in between season two and the movie, uh, were even considering doing some sort of a Christmas special while we were still on NBC. And when NBC decided to move on with their regime change, uh, it was something that was very much like. A possibility and Roku was delighted by the idea and so when they decided to pick us up for this um, it felt like a perfect fit and also then it put us on a really deliciously fast timeline to get this thing done and released by you know early December. So so what was your reaction when you got the call um, to do a, you know a Christmas special? Uh, my reaction was pure gratitude. Uh, I, I, gratitude for Lionsgate, gratitude to Roku, to the writer, Austin Winsberg, and really mostly to our fans for drumming up the support and making it possible because, um, you know, it's really cool of Roku to listen to that fan support, but you know, that it was clearly there, um, in a very big and impactful way for everyone to make the decision to keep going with this thing and keep telling these stories and not leave the audience hanging. So what... What suppose in your words that um, makes Zoe work so much that resonates with the fans? I think it's a lot of the, uh, well, first of all, there's a big musical aspect and there's a magical aspect, which is really cool because not only are musicals different than other shows, but I think our show is different than other musicals uh, because of the superpower aspect of it all. Um, but I, I really think that that's something that really sets us apart is the fact that when we came out, it was a very moving story about music and grief and moving on and carrying on. Um, but what, since it happened during the pandemic, a lot of people used our show as, as this form of escapism. And it really took on a life of its own, um, a very like meta life of its own in that, you know, people were watching Peter Gallagher's character um, go through something really tragic and, and his and the family members surrounding him going through something very tragic. And I think a lot of people can relate to that with COVID and the pandemic and um, everyone was home, you know? And so I really saw, especially in season one, people take to this in a really emotional way. And our show really does sneak up on people emotionally. So um, once we were able to return for season two and now the movie, we understood that, that that emotionality is like a vital piece of storytelling for us. So where, 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 at which point of the relationship now is your character with Zoe? Because that was such a, how can you say, a romantic journey that uh, everybody lived through for two seasons at least. Yeah, I feel a lot of relief uh, and excitement in just being the boyfriend right now. I feel like I've fought long and hard for it. My character has fought hard for it. So, um, you know, there's a different dynamic, of course, like in now being a steady boyfriend of Zoe's, but that is where we are at the beginning of this movie. And, you know, hopefully audiences will see that that's where we are at the end of the movie. Now, of course, uh, you know, for, for a lot of us, we only have seen the trailer so far where, you know, anticipating and waiting to watch as Zoe's extraordinary play um, Christmas. And, uh, and I guess, uh, you know, it's just another Christmas story. I guess what th this time around Zoe's anxiety is just over that everyone is leaving except for you for, uh, for Christmas. That's right. Well, I think that, you know, it's the first Christmas without Mitch. So there's that emotional element, but, you know, everyone decides to, you know, chooses to deal with that and cope with that in a different way. And I think Zoe was expecting everyone to come together and turns out they're actually all drifting apart and all kind of, I don't know, maybe distracting themselves from 
from the, the potential sadness that it would be to have a Christmas without your father for the first time. And so in typical type A Zoe fashion, she is going to make it the best, most magical, most Mitch Christmas ever. And that therein lies like a lot of not only um, humor, but conflict. And I think a lot of relief uh, in the end. Um, there's some other storytelling devices that are not uh, shown in the trailer that, that people and audiences will have to wait for. But a huge, huge um, part of our story is that first Christmas without Mitch. And um, where, where, where does your character going to be live besides the loyal um, boyfriend uh, for, for this uh, film? Well, Max is feeling himself. He's got the power now. So, um, you know, he's, he's really wanted this, or, or at least he's wanted the equality between him and Zoe where he can hear her thoughts, you know, because he thought it was very unfair that she could hear what's going on in his head. And you saw that a lot in season two. Um, so, yeah, I mean, he's got a thriving business. He's got the woman of his dreams and he has the ability to do magical things. So Max is happy uh, and you get to see how he navigates that. And even, you know, maybe certain things kind of take him for, uh, for a bit of a, throw him for a bit of a loop and surprise him. Um, I really, really like my character's arc in this movie. And I like that I, he starts in a really solid spot. I love Max too. He is, he is such an optimistic guy, but can't, can you uh, give us a preview of uh, what some of the songs that uh, Max or anyone else is, will be singing? Well, Max Richmond brings the Hanukkah. So you know that there's going to be a bit of a Hanukkah tie-in with Max. Um, I do sing a non-holiday. I sing two non-holiday songs, actually, too. So um, I can't tell you what they are, but that gives you a huge catalog to, you know, predict. <laughs> so, um, Skylar, I mean, the, a film like this moved so quickly. How do you, how do you even prep for something like this? I know the show moved fairly quickly too during the season. Yes. But, uh, but what's what's the magic behind the preparation, getting all of this right? The magic is tons of hard work and tons of people bringing us to the the the, the place we're at when when it's time to film. And that's, you know, everything from production design to every single crew member, to the music department, to the writers, to director prepping, our choreographer and team dance, Mandy Moore, Jeffrey Mortensen, and Jillian Myers. And, you know, we've, we've built this little factory up in Vancouver. So we know how it works. And essentially, um, it was like filming a double episode. And we used to do man, we used to do 13 of them back to back to back to back. And while we were filming one, we were prepping the next and, and it would just keep going. So I won't say that this was easier, but it was definitely quicker. It was definitely more of a sprint than what's normally a marathon. And um, it's very weird when we were on the second half of filming the movie, I feel like personally, energy wise and memorization wise and everything I really hit my stride and I think a lot of the other cast did too it was very weird to be like oh my god we only have five more days this is weird because normally we would be really just starting to kind of take off um so I won't say it was easier but it was just like a different conservation of energy and what and working with the rest reuniting with the rest of the cast was was must have been such a delight especially for a Christmas movie like this right yeah, we were really gracious. I mean, like there was a time where we didn't know if or when or how we would ever get this group together again. And here we were just a month later on set in the same wardrobe on the same sets, you know, doing the same writers, uh, you know, lines. And, and we were so honestly gracious and grateful that we were able to do it that way. You, you know, at, by doing this Christmas movie, you're giving fans a lot of hope that there, there might be more down the road. Uh, is, is that what uh, you guys are secretly hoping down the, down the road? Or not so secretly hoping. Uh, I, I'm of course open to it. Um, uh, and uh, I'm trying not to get too ahead of myself. I'm just really happy that we were able to do this. Um, but in seeing even the trailer and seeing the parts of the movie that I have, it really opened my eyes to the fact that these characters can go anywhere. Um, and, and, and we can see anything through these characters' eyes, whether it's another holiday, whether it's a vacation, 
Um, there might be a season three, but there also might just be more movies to be made as well. I know sometimes it's always backwards when you're, when you're hoping for six seasons and a movie, but uh, two seasons and movie and maybe possibly four more seasons. I mean, it, it's hopefully that works down the road. That'd be great. That'd be great. Yeah. I mean, we're definitely on the timeline for it. So we'll see how that, we'll see how this does. We'll see what the reaction is and we'll see what the awesome people at Roku, uh, you know, decide. I mean, what's really great and what I'm really happy about is the fact that our series, all 25 episodes in two seasons are on the Roku channel now for free. And it's really easy. It's really easy to tell my family and friends and even those people that I know that have never seen the show, like, hey, you, I know exactly where to tell you to go. I can guarantee it's easy to use. It's really user-friendly. And I'm just a really big fan of the Roku channel as an entity. And I'm a really big fan that they're, you know, putting us on there and, and giving us such great exposure. You know, I, I, I have to ask because, uh, because I, lo I love this show too. And I always love just to go to the straight to the musical scene or um, certain scenes that and just replay those things over and over again. Out of the two previous two seasons, which scene is your favorite that you just love to play over and over again for yourself to watch? Well, it makes me sound like a narcissist to say that I play it over and over again. I won't say I play it over and over again, but a scene that I really love doing and feel very rewarded by the entire sequence is um, the um, my Jekyll and Hyde moment where I'm doing Take Me Out to the Ball Game into I'll Make Love to You into eventually a moment like this with Kelly Clarkson. Um, it was basically like a one act play where my character is trying desperately to take control over his, you know, his singing. And um, it was a really fun uh, sequence to shoot with Jane. Um, it was an entire act of television that's pretty long. And um, another, another thrilling feat that I think uh, we accomplished was at the end of season one, we did a six plus minute one -er, uh and we did the entire song of American Pie. Yeah, that, that, was, that was a beautiful sequence. That is terrific. Well, let me uh, let me leave with one more thought. Uh, are you are you hopeful that someday Max may actually get uh, Zoe's power? He's got it already. I mean, he's he, I, it's already happened. So I'm not only hopeful for it. I I know what happened. <laughs> that is terrific. Well, hey Skylar, hey, thank you uh, for uh, speaking to us about Zoe's extraordinary Christmas. This is this is a uh, one in the one of the movies that uh, everyone's going to look forward to uh, watching, especially on Roku um, for, for December. This is great. Thank you so much. Thanks for sitting down with me. Hey, thank you. Appreciate it. Next okay. time.